Cool. Uh, thank you. As I uh, mentioned earlier, uh, my name is Sally Reader. I work for Transport for London. Uh, I work in the Asset Operations Department um, and I just kind of wanted to introduce ourselves because we need to fix my street and also just talk a little bit about how it's really been helping us out at the moment in the strange situation that we're in. So if we click on to the next slide, um, like most of you, we looked at introducing the Fix My Street platform to solve a problem. So Transport for London is split into two halves. We've got London Underground and Surface Transport. Surface Transport basically deals with everything that isn't London Underground or Crossrail. Within Surface Transport, we deal with a whole host of different things uh, from bus operations to health and safety, scheme planning, all that kind of thing. And I work in the Network Management Directorate that basically looks after the road network. Uh, so we run the 24-7 control centre, uh, we have bus operations in there, we've got tunnel control, we run incidents and events when they happen uh, from there. And I work in the asset operations team that is, is part of that wider directorate and we basically look after all the on-street assets uh, for surface transport. So that's kind of anything that isn't related to the rails or the cable car. So to give you a, a really brief idea of the numbers that we're dealing with, some things we look after Pan London. So things like bus shelters, bus stops, traffic lights, everything within the Greater London area and a few bits and pieces just outside. So we've got about 21 and a half thousand bus stops that we maintain. Then also we've got the uh, other side of the things, which is the TfL road network. That covers about 580 kilometres within Greater London. 30% of that, give or take, is high-speed roads. The rest of it is your kind of normal trunk roads. And incorporated within that, we've got cycleways, footways, streetlights. We also deal with road work coordinating and permitting, and we, we use Fix My Street for customers to report issues with road works. And we also have other assets like trees. Uh, we have a lot of trees. More about them later. We've got about 24,000 of them. So if you flick on to the next slide, um, just to, as I'm sure how many of you did, our experience with moving over to um, the Fix My Street platform was London Underground's been around for a lot longer than surface transport. So all our customer reporting systems were based around London Underground, which is very different. It's a closed network. It's mainly about ticketing and oyster refunds. And the members of the public go to our customer contact centre who deal with thousands of calls and they were able to deal with things like that direct. So that was perfect. With the road network, it's a bit more complicated. Uh, we were finding that our reporting tools weren't really working for the public. We weren't getting the messages properly, so then we couldn't fix things. So the public was telling the contact centre and the contact centre were telling us and it, the messages were taking too long to get to us and they were taking too long to get back to the customers. So we really needed something that was geographically based so we could actually find what they were talking about. When you've got 21 and a half thousand bus stops, you need to know exactly which one they're talking about. Um, and the Fix My Street platform obviously offered us this because it meant that the public could get reports directly to our maintenance teams while the customer contact centre just kind of kept an eye on what we were doing rather than actually having to interfere, if you like. And how this works particularly well for us is we've got a 24-7 asset fault response desk who deal with emergency things. So things like traffic signal all outs, big potholes, fallen trees, smashed up bus shelters. and in theory, depending on what the asset is, somebody could report an issue with it at 7pm and it could be fixed by 10pm. So in time for the rush hour the following morning, it's all been fixed. And we always did offer that service internally, but we were never able to offer it to the public. So that was obviously something that was really important to us. Um, and the other thing that we desperately needed was reporting because none of our systems for custom reporting were geographic. We could never get any stats out of it that were really meaningful and we could never use it for resourcing. But the heat map, which we spoke about earlier, is fantastic because we can see really quickly if there's a problem somewhere and we can focus our resources on that. And we, we've never really been able to use the data in that way before. And at the moment, that's come in particularly helpful, <laughs> um, as I'll explain. So if we could flick on to the next slide. Um, what we couldn't have predicted when we started this uh, rolling in December is the situation that we now find ourselves in. Um, it's presented challenges for all of us. Um, I'm sure you're all experiencing the same. 
So we have reduced the amount of time that we are spending on street uh, to fit in with government guidelines and social distancing. Uh, but we still need to keep the network safe. We need to keep it safe for our own staff and we need to keep it safe for the people who are using it. And the people that are using it at the moment are like key workers. And it's doubly important that we make it right for them right now. And as well as reducing the time on the street, we've also been doing lots of extra activity as well. There's a few examples on the slide. We've been helping set up NHS Nightingale. We've been putting in temporary facilities for bus drivers. We've been doing all kinds of different things. So while we are still carrying out our um, contractual safety inspections with our contractors, they happen every 28 days or once a week, depending on the road. Our officers are normally out on the road 60-70% of their time doing various things on street, checking things, auditing things, and that has all stopped. They're all only going out now for safety critical issues. So we've lost the eyes and ears in our network and we've been very um, concerned about that and how we're going to deal with it. So uh, on to the next slide. This is basically how uh, street care, as we call it, Fix My Street, has been helping us during this time. Um, we were getting on average about 1,200 reports a month just for our team, uh, which is about right. Last year we had 10,000 customer inquiries for our team. So the numbers have gone up, as you'd expect, because it's easier to use. Um, they've obviously now decreased again. We're back down by about two thirds. But the reports that we are having are so helpful to us. Um, we've had a lot of reports on highways issues, as you would expect, because there's a lot of issues linked with highways. Our traffic lights do self-report. Um, if they go all out or if they get stuck on red, but there's always those little things that don't quite get picked up by the system. So allowing customers to be able to report issues directly to us is fantastic. Disappointingly, we've had quite a lot of reports of smashed up bus shelters. You'd think at the moment that people might perhaps choose not to do that, um, but obviously they are. They don't self-report. Our guys aren't out on the street as much. Um, so there's a danger that it happens and we don't know. And a lot of the people using the bus network at the moment are like NHS workers. And after they've just pulled a 12 hour shift, we don't want them stood in a big pile of glass waiting for a bus. So um, the extra dynamic of allowing um, customers to report things directly to us that's simple and straightforward has helped us out hugely at the moment, particularly with things like trees. Um, we do all our annual surveys and everything and the highways inspectors will have a have an eye on them when they're going around but in between those 28 days if someone hits the tree or anything like that it can cause all kinds of problems as I'm sure many of you know trees are great they look beautiful everybody loves them they help with pollution they help with biodiversity but if one of those big old London planes falls down we are in a lot of trouble and um, what we've really found with Fix My Street is that it's given us that extra dynamic of eyes and ears on the network that we never thought we were going to need and actually we do right now and it's been absolutely invaluable um, and just the final slide clicking over to that we're obviously all in very bizarre strange mm -hmm. times right now we're telling people not to use our network um, who heard of a transport authority telling people not to use their services it's crazy times um, and this has helped us with focusing our work, with knowing about safety critical faults, also being able to keep customers update of what we can and can't do right now. Um, and we're really looking forward to developing the platform with, with all of you um, and with my society um, to hopefully make it much better. And the lack of contact between lots of different teams on inquiries has also really helped as you'll all have read, a lot of our staff have been furloughed. So um, it's just been um, so helpful to us. And um, we're really looking forward to um, getting involved and doing more things. Thanks, Sally. That was a brilliant talk. And, you know, it, it's so nice to hear that Fix My Street is helping in that way that, you know, none of us possibly could have ever anticipated. So it's lovely to hear, hear about that.